All right, so I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about the solar system and how we have that set up. about the solar system and how we have that set up. So right now we have um, a 100 watt Renogy solar panel on the back of the building and then we also have uh, the Harbor Freight kit on this side of the building. The, the Renogy comes in right through here, goes up to this charge controller. Then this charge controller goes to those two batteries down there. Then the Harbor Freight system comes in through this cable, goes down to that charge controller that I have just sitting on the floor right now. Eventually I'm going to get a better one because I don't trust this charge controller. We unhook the Harbor Freight system when we're not here. And then it goes to the batteries. And then the dump load on this charge controller goes to the original Harbor Freight control system. Um, now a lot of people have said on YouTube that this charge controller uh, will not regulate your batteries. So that's part of the reason why I have it hooked up the way I have it hooked up. So with it coming off the dump load, I can control exactly how much juice is going to the box and through this charge controller control how much is going to the batteries off the Harbor Freight system. Part of the reason why I have two charge controllers is due to the fact that if I were to parallel the solar panels, anytime you put solar panels uh, together that are different wattages, it will knock your entire system down to whatever the lowest wattage panel is. So this is a good way to circumvent having to do any kind of fancy wiring. It's a lot easier to pick up a cheap $12 charge controller and just run another charge controller. Um, if you, if you want to get a better idea of what I'm talking about, you can check out Rob MC's um, uh, channel. He's got like eight or nine charge controllers on his system. I think he's got one for each solar panel he has. I don't know. Um, so anyway, then um, I've got a couple inverters, small inverters, that we use. Um, we use this one basically just right now for the crock pot and so on and so forth. Um, eventually, I have a 3000 watt inverter that I'm going to hook up that I can tie into the electrical outlets. I've got one outlet installed now, right here. And this outlet runs outside and we can plug it directly into the generator and have power outside. I'm going to put another outlet in over there underneath the TV, but eventually we'll have it set up to where the battery bank is underneath the tiny house or in the dog shed and I can either plug into the inverter or I can plug into the generator depending on which I want to uh, run the power through and uh, that's really nice because sometimes um, like in the summertime we run an air conditioner in here and I don't want to run an air conditioner on solar power so by having this here, it allows me to plug the AC in, hook up the generator, run the air conditioner, but yet my lights, the TV, the crock pot, and all that stuff is still running off solar. So I'm running 120 and 12 volt at the same time. Let's take a look at the panels outside. 
And as you can see, our dog is so stupid, she can be outside for less than one minute and have herself tangled. All right, this is where the power comes into the cabin for the, uh, for the 120. Yeah, eventually, I'll put a coupling on there and make it look nice. This right here is the Renogy cables going around to the panel on the back, the Harbor Freight panels right there, going in right there, going to those charge controllers I showed you a moment ago. Follow it around, follow the wire, and there's the Renogy panel. It's a little later in the afternoon, and as you can see, we're only getting some partial direct sunlight uh, because of the trees. That's part of the reason why we didn't put it on the roof is because it will uh, just get too much shade. With it mounted there through the trees, this fly is attacking me, through the trees over there, and you can see that gap. In the morning time, we get a couple hours of good solid direct sunlight to hit that panel. That panel pulls in about 13. So we only need a couple hours of good direct sunlight to boost that battery bank back up, uh, considering the fact that our 12 volt load is so low. The doghouse is where we'll keep the generator when it's raining and eventually we're going to have our battery bank inside there or um, underneath the cabin. I haven't decided. I, I think ultimately I would feel better having it in the doghouse in the event of the fact that if there were any kind of malfunctioning and if a fire were to occur it wouldn't burn the whole building down, just the doghouse. Um, everything's up, wired up properly, so I don't really think I have anything to worry about. But uh, I don't know, just I, I'd feel more comfortable having, um, you know, four or five batteries in the doghouse as opposed to under the cabin. Uh, in the event of off gassing, seeping into the cabin, and uh, any kind of malfunctioning. Now I'm gonna untangle my stupid dog. This way. Come on. Come on. This way. Come on. No. No. This way. This way. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. All right. Wow, you're free.